In this big ol' universe, on a tiny blue speck, there is a very special place where there exists a microcosm that expresses what life on a speck is really like. You know, weird. Hello. Hi. Can't get freaky fly there. <laughs> Told you I'm gonna let my freak fly fly. Um, I'm Ruth Ogilvie, and I was born in Quincy, Illinois. My younger daughter was going to university here at Santa Cruz, and I'd come up and visit her and ride her bicycle around, and I said, you know, I saw the littlest house today. I don't know how anybody could ever live in it. And I thought, now what am I going to do with it? But I felt like I needed to rescue this house. There was just something about it that, uh, that made me want to do something to, to bring it up to to code the way it should be. And uh, um, I can't think of anybody that's been on this street as long as I have. Everyone that lives on the streets must be of some interest. But um, the man with this piece is we're, we're all in the same boat. So at this very abstract ship, down here in these curtain areas, we have the uh, little stick figures, which are all filing their way The bell has been a very intimate part of my life because my father had a bell and I loved to go into the library and to ring the bell. <laughs> and so I have done this all my life. It's amazing that when I think of where I was born and all the things I did and that I ended up here and washing the street <laughs> in Santa Cruz. When Hitler came, that was a, really a shock. So I stayed in Berlin and it was just terrible because the Russians came in. The Siberian troops were particularly horrible and I was um, really uh, great, if you want to call it that way. I can't say, yes, that's what it was, by 12 Russians. Mm. And I was left um, as if I going, was going to die. Well, one of the things where it came from was that the British and the, and the French were so stupid, and including the Americans, to take everything away from Germany. And if you have that 50 million people, you really have to let them have. So stupid, you can't keep people from working, you know. But you see, to really come to dislike Jews who never was never a problem, because I, I didn't think they were, they were Germans. You see, that's a very difficult thing to teach a people to say, uh, you know, uh, if they were, had been black, perhaps that would be easier, have easier. But Jews, uh, I mean, mm. Mm. Uh, no, no, uh, no idea why Jews should be different, you know. Mm. Worldwide. I regard my <laughs> <laughs> so what you, you want to ask me though? You got an interview. I ain't yep. even worried about it. So do you hang out around here? Yeah, I'm sometimes, you know, we stopped hanging around after Robbie got killed though. Oh, was that a friend of yours? Yeah, he was a really? little rider. White guy. He was white, so don't get him misconstrued. We all love each other around here. You yeah. Know what I mean? Well, what do you think that was all about? Uh, bullshit, bullshit. Yeah? Yeah. How can we stop that kind of thing from happening? Uh, tell people to knuckle up and leave that guns and shit at home because they're cowards, you know what I mean? We got yeah. knuckles out here. You know, the, periodically uh, things will come and go at Loudon Nelson, like 
you know, uh, drug exchange, stuff like that. And so the police, over the 27 years I've been here, have, uh, it's kind of like it, you know, it gets one way and then they come in and they clean it out for a while and for a while it's not like that, then it kind of builds up again. Oh, well, these are desperate times, but I'm not sure if that has much to do with it. Uh, you know, it, it's just where the, the world's headed that way, man. Mor morals are going down the tubes, you know. Um, uh, gangs are forming mostly out of desperation to, for survival. The Manhattan Project began in 1948 and 49, okay. and he went to Yale. He did. Uh, he was at Yale, and so they took the best of all the universities for the Manhattan Project. And of course, they didn't know that, that what that would be, what this would be used for. But he left uh, after a couple of years. <clears throat> then he found out what it was going to be used for. And whenever uh, there's a problem in the neighborhood, why we find uh, send leaflets around and we have a meeting, and we've gone through drug drug problems and that were really very bad uh, down by Loudon Nelson School here. And uh, one night we all, all the neighbors marched down there at night and uh, drove these people out of there. Uh, what's your rat's name? Um, his name is Rhythm. He's a Dumbo rat. He's just a little baby. So and what kind of stuff do you see here in the park? Um, I see a lot of people just coming together, a lot of togetherness. People just loving each other and hanging out, and just trying to find, you know, peace and quiet out of the bustling Santa Cruz City tourism. We have our own farm, uh, which we raise most of our products for the restaurant. So uh, what we do is, is we try to be very reflective of the bounty of California. But there is one more ingredient to this battle, our secret ingredient. Give me some head, baby. I'm talking about cabbage. I don't want no cabbage patch doll. I want the real thing. I'm Ed Compost or Compost Ed, depending on how, you know, future, past, present, or future perfect you'd like to be. But Compost Ed is the guy who has invented this Santa Cruz style of composting called Compulch. There's no turning. There's just piling it on top and mining it out from underneath. But right now, I'm digging in here to see if I can find a, a little worm love nest. I have kitchen waste from 15 different people. My tenants, my Marnie, my wife and I, and then our neighbors, different neighbors around us. Uh, I'm making a platform, an entrepreneurial tool set to help improve world conditions uh, by allowing people to make a community-based media industry, invest in one another, and in the long run, monetize education, a lot of things like that. Sad kitty, you're just a whore of Washington Street. You know, I don't know, man. I think the individual feels pretty powerless to affect what's going on. You know, I mean, uh, and so really what it comes down to is the only thing you can do is affect your little sphere. And every person you have contact with or every situation you're in, you have a choice. You know, you can, you can, you can leave with a bad taste or a good one. And uh, it's unfortunate that a lot of people choose to, uh, to leave a bad taste. And everywhere they go, it's destruction or, you know, chaos. And with all the corruption in our uh, system that's real visible to the citizens, it's not much motivation to, uh, you know, to do the right thing. And we lived in Hiroshima and I became very much involved with, um, with people who had been hurt through the bomb and worked in their hospitals and helped and, and do, did all this sort of thing and became very active in peace. I'd already be, uh, begun to work, do a lot of peace work in America but I had to be very careful. Americans, when they heard my accents, they would just say, go back where you came from, and all of this. So um, 
I did things which was, were not so visible. And then in, uh, in Japan, I became very involved in the peace movement. And Korea movement too, because there was this absolute hate between Japan and Korea, because they had occupied it and now after the war. I'm terrified with if, if we don't get this present administration out, I don't know what's going to happen to us because they just, they're every, they're, everything they do is tearing this country apart. So I'm very much um, deeply moved by what is happening in, in New Orleans. And I'm appalled at how little was done. And creepier and creepier. There's more thugs around, more um, stabbings, murders, um, break-ins, burglaries, crime. We gonna get caught and we tried to do what we thought was best. Ain't gonna give them amphibians no rest. Gonna save them, the sun goes down. No leaf wet till the moon gets round. I'm in Missouri, the river bottom, edge of a slew, baby, everything's I got them. They're singing along like a little blue. I can't explain it, can you? I like Santa Cruz. I, I've never met, lived anywhere where I've met so many interesting people. My Buddhism, I practiced all. I never was without. Every morning I would ring the bell and and in the evening, you know, this was just the bell was the center, and I would sit. I would sit every day about an hour, at least. So that that really um, um, gave me this peace of mind, and the, my my inner peace, you know. And I, for me, each moment of time was really of. Each moment of time was of equal value. Each moment of time was of equal value. Each moment of time was of equal value. It seems many of the problems and most of the solutions for this world can be found in our own backyard. Think globally, act locally, and keep it weird.